So I was really interested in the animal symbolism in the film. Um, there is the dog. There's like a dog statue with, I think, the, the you know, snake dick. Um, there's, um, and then later, uh, uh, Regan has drawn this winged dog, which I wonder if that's like the demon is now free somehow or he's abroad or something like that. Um, her artwork, there's that orange bird. Do you guys know what kind of bird that is? Um, it's said in the book, but I cannot quite me remember. I feel like that would help me more if I knew, but, I but think yeah, there's I, I a bird. I remember that Chris calls it a dumb bird. Yeah. Oh, interesting. Interesting. Like, not, do you know if she means not speaking or unintelligent? Um, I think she, I think she meant, meant it like stupid. Right, right. Um, there's also a turtle in her artwork, which... They find it at a point where, I, I, I want to say, and I'm not sure, that maybe it's around the scene where um, Marin is talking about, or somebody is talking about that exorcism of Marin's took months. So maybe that's a, a slowness sort of a thing, or maybe it's a shell sort of thing, a protection or something. Uh, I'm trying to think what else came up in terms of, oh, the horse. So it's before, I think it's before the Captain Howdy Ouija board scene, but yeah. at some point early on, yeah. um, she talks about a horse. And a horse is... Um, you know, the, the rider and mount working in tandem, that could be a possession metaphor. Um, it could be a possession. Horses are also sometimes associated with, like, carrying burdens or things like that. So maybe uh, Reagan is being forced to carry a burden. And I say, I switch back and forth. Reagan and Regan, which one is it? Reagan. Reagan. Reagan, okay, thank you. And um, so there's that one as well. I feel like I'm missing pigs. rats. Oh, pigs. Yeah. Talk about pigs. Yeah, and rats. Um, yeah. Yeah, it, it, it's interesting, the, the pig symbolism for me, because, like, like, the demon calls Reg, Regan a, a piglet and the mom a sow. Is there um, a biblical story where demons are cast into pigs? Am yeah, I yeah, Legion. Yeah, yeah. And that, that oh, Legion's actually... one of the books in the series, isn't it? Uh, yes, it yeah. is. Uh, but, like, the, the thing about pigs actually comes up. Uh, uh, Damien Karras uh, is, is researching about, um, like, demonic possession in the Legion story. Uh, you know, we Are Legion story comes up and, and is discussing the, the method of exorcism, which was transferring the demonic yeah. entity to the pigs and then leading the pigs into the river, oh, killing them. Did they, they go off a cliff in that story, too? Cliff, yeah, right, yeah. Which is obviously a, a very blatant parallel to the what window Paris metaphor, right. himself does, which is draw, yeah. you know, he, he makes himself the sacrificial pig. And the whole general himself. falling metaphor mm -hmm. of, and in a sense, right, um, you know, I can't say with Burke, but as far as um, him taking the demon in and then diving, that's like a an up is down sort of a, he's falling, but he's redeemed in some way because of what he did, right? right. We don't know if he's going to go to hell or heaven or what the rules are about that, but there's like um, kind of parallel... Um, sort of opposing motion going on there. I, you know. I, I'm, I'm interested in, like, Bur Burke is an odd character, because, mm -hmm. like, he's there in the sense that he's stuck, as Damien's mom seems to be stuck, inside of Reagan with the demon? I'm not sure if, like... I, I forgot to mention him earlier, but when we were talking about sexual abuse, he's the last one in her room. Mm -hmm. He goes out the window, right? She's obviously... Something traumatic has happened. Of course, it already began, but still something traumatic is happening. That made me think of that as well. Uh, in the party, he also attacks the guy for being a Nazi. He mm -hmm. thinks he's secret Gestapo or something. Yeah, the, he, he... Throughout the book, every time he sees Carl, even though Carl is Swiss, he, he just keeps, like calling him a Nazi, mm -hmm. associating him with Goebbels and Hitler. Yeah. And, and, and so the, to, to speak on, like, the, the personalities manifested and, like, with Burke and Paris's mom, I, I think the implication, I, I don't think that is their physical, like, like, I don't think that is actually them, because Marin, I don't know, we've kind of got, gone off the animal topic a little bit. But That's we'll okay. Get, um, we'll get back to it. Uh, I don't think that is actually them because Marin, when, like um, later on, when, when Karis is like, um, uh, the, uh, Reagan has manifested three distinct personalities, and Marin stops him and he says, "There is only one." Mm -hmm. uh, and so I think um, the the demon is using people in, um, in in the characters' lives and like trying to play off their guilt. But I, I don't think I don't think Pazuzu has any control over their actual souls. I think it's mm. just like mimicry. Oh, um, yeah. Because it's important to note, Burke does not uh, appear 
as a, as one of Reagan's personalities until Chris makes the realization, oh God, Reagan oh, killed Burke. Okay. Uh, it, it's, it's when she realizes, oh, it was Reagan that killed Burke, that's when you know, the, the infamous crucifix scene happens and then uh, Reagan you know, tur turns her head all the way around and speaks in, in Burke's voice, which gets into Chris's guilt because she believes herself responsible for Reagan's situation and thereby uh, thereby would believe herself also responsible for Burke's death. Right, right. Um, and so, uh, and so it, it's that, once again that manipulation tactic of, um, you know, uh, just kind of mimicking the voices of people in, in the characters' lives that makes them yeah, feel the guilty. Yeah, mother, yeah. yeah. And, and you were talking about the three-in-one personality, which also makes me wonder, is he creating kind of a, um, a perverted version of the Trinity, which people argue is that just one, one being or one spirit, or is it three gods? Yeah. So, yeah. And one of the um, characters that the demon tries to torment is somewhat unsuccessful because she's hardly ever in the room, is uh, Sharon, whose boyfriend is a horseman. Oh, interesting. Yeah, the, the horse uh, that was mentioned, uh, the horse belongs to Sharon's boyfriend. Oh, you're right. It, it isn't, uh, yeah, because she's asking for a horse, so it's not their family's horse. You're right. <laughs> yeah. Um, oh, I had another. Uh, you had mentioned, like, um, Burke being, like, up in, in her room, and, mm -hmm. like, you tied that into, like, the, um, the, like, kind of childhood sexual abuse stuff. And, and I do wonder if that is like where the book is trying to go because um like uh, yeah, they, they, make, sure. they make a very clear point that it's like uh, you know chris is like there is no reason burke would have been up in reagan's room so right, i wonder right. if, if they're trying to imply that he was trying to do something inappropriate but in the book um, but he's also a precursor to to Karis taking on the demon and going out the window as well that's true um and in, in the book um like the demon speaking as Burke does explain that he's like, you know, talking in Burke's voice and saying that like, you know, I heard her moaning up in her room and thought she needed help. And so I came up in, in here and then she attacked me. And of course the demon could be lying and like giving a false narrative about what sure. happened. Um, but, uh, but, but like, I like to think, um, uh, that, um, uh, Burke uh, was not doing anything inappropriate, and he was genuinely, mm -hmm. genuinely trying to uh, to help Reagan. Thought she was in trouble or something like that. Uh, but but I, I definitely I, 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 that thought did cross my mind that idea of well he shouldn't have been up there in the first place. And, and perhaps he was killed, you know, when and where he was in order to sow suspicion and make people wonder about his motives. Right. Yeah. I, you know, because he was in a sense like he's anti-Nazi, but he's also at going after someone who's Swiss, who's not, who wasn't really a Nazi. So it's like that motivation is unclear as well. Yeah, it's a weird kind of racist anti-anti-Nazi. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, it is. It is uh, weird. Yeah. It, it it also makes me wonder about Burke's sexuality a little bit because when he's first described, it's as effeminate and alpha. Oh, right. Yeah. Yeah. You said that the other day. Yeah. Uh, and so to bring it back to the point of animals, I had a, I had a small point to make about this. Sure. A lot of the animals that um, that appear throughout uh, the movie uh, and in the book, um, the animal symbology is even stronger as um, uh, Reagan actually makes animal noises. Mm -hmm. She neighs oh. like a horse. She uh, squeals like a pig. Squeals oh, like okay. a pig. Um, and um, the steer noise that she 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 blows like a steer. Mm. Yeah. Interesting. And uh, animals are actually very closely associated with uh, imagery of Pazuzu. Pazuzu was thought yes, of like yes. this very animalistic deity. Um, uh, I don't know if animalistic is the right word, but um, bestial entity that, that had dominion over a lot of animals. So it would make sense that a variety of animals would show up, especially like... Um, because uh, he was a god of wind, so birds right. make a lot of sense because he got like air, and so like sure. birds flying. Um, and also before the exorcism, um, Marin is talking to Karis, and he says the demon will try to make us think that we're we're nothing, we're like animals, yeah. right? So in that sense, human and animal is being contrasted in kind of this us versus other sort of um, uh, paradigm. It 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 it's sort of interesting to me that like. Um, one of the animals is a steer hmm. with like just the whole the just knowing what i know about like 
horned god imagery mm. and how that ties into Christianity. Yeah. And then the one other thing I wanted to ask was about the animal that's actually not there, but they say it is or think it is, which would be the rats in the attic. And you said squirrels once there, they tell her just because she's afraid of rats. So any thoughts about that? Yeah, so I, I feel like, um, so, oh, okay, I was, I, 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 it actually just dawned on me. Rats are usually thought of as an intrusive pest. Sure. And so yeah. it could be thought of as, you know, like... They set traps for them. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and, and so it could be Chris kind of cluing into the fact that there is something in my house that like that is intruding oh, that yeah, I do yeah, not yeah. want in here. And so she you know, she like thinks of it as rats, but like, like obviously like it, it could be like the demon. But like I think mean, like it, it, there there is symbology in that where like you know, rats are thought of as this like very intrusive thing. That makes sense. There, there's also the symbolism of rats playing. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, um, yeah, yeah. P Pazuzu is also has dominion over plague. Oh, okay, okay. Well, wind. That makes sense if he controls wind, yeah, yeah. or it. Um, I was also thinking, um, just as you were speaking, uh, rats carry disease. And we, you know, part of the process of this movie is ruling out medical disease in this, mm -hmm. and ruling out rats as well. You know, oh, it's not rats. Oh, it's not medical disease, at least, or, or mental illness. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm surprised that, I, talking of rats, that, like, when Chris mentioned, you know, they... Did she mention ever to the doctors they'd set traps out for rats? Uh, I don't think so. M maybe? I, I, I don't know. I don't recall it in the movie. Though, if, if she had, I'm surprised none of the doctors said, check for hauntivirus. <laughs> <laughs> and, and it is kind of weird, real quick, thinking about um, the, uh, the idea of... Um, it's like, it's not a disease, it's a possession. But, like, if you think about it in a weird way, a possession is just a spiritual virus. <laughs> <laughs> That's actually how the uh, uh, one exorcist in the series, Marcus, talks about it to the other one, Tomas, about how uh, demons are like a spiritual virus. Because, mm. yeah, I mean, like, viruses the way they work is you know it's it's these malevolent like well we think of them as malevolent because like right they're, they're just they're, trying to survive right. yeah. um but the, there's the, the, these things that come in and they hijack the cells of our body yeah, take yeah. control over our exactly. cells and to, to the point that our body does not work how we want it to anymore yeah. uh, and so like that's that's how a demon works just on a more spiritual uh, and the level. idea of the spiritual virus brings together fields of inquiry so that makes yeah. sense yeah yeah so uh, speaking of um, of uh, uh, like uh, uh, like how viruses uh, and I'm, I'm forgetting words speaking of how viruses make your body not work how you want them to uh like that gets into uh, body horror uh, um uh, which is a very central theme uh, throughout uh, the yeah, book and yeah. um, uh, even just like in in the same uh like in the spirit of uh like sickness um bile and like vomit yeah, yeah. Uh, it, is, it comes out like that uh, Reagan loves to puke on the beasts. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. uh, and uh, obviously, like, vomit is very heavily associated with sickness. It's, like, right, one of the right. things, like, people do a lot when they get sick. And, and so, uh, and, like, with Pazuzu being a, uh, like, having dominion over disease, um, like, it would make sense that, like, um, the, uh, like stuff like bile and, and the, the more, like, the withering away of the body comes yeah. into effect. And, like, to be fair, like, in a lot of like uh, like real world uh, possessions, uh, uh, like uh, like the case of Emily Rose, uh, what what the, the real case that the possession of Emily Rose is based on, like the withering of the body, is like something that actually happens. Whether that's like uh, through just uh, is mostly due to like natural emaciation, you know, it's like um, uh, but yeah, yeah, like um, sickness and, and like. Uh, the puking and like the general like um i think of when karis sees reagan for the first time like it would, before he goes up into the bedroom um uh chris shows him a picture of reagan uh, what she used mm. to look like and he's like that 
sweet little girl, and then he walks up into the room, and he has the thought, the thing sitting in that bed is not that little girl. Yeah. Uh, because she's been so, her body has been so twisted and malformed that she looks nothing like. Uh, and, the, you know, the withering, that's an imbalance of fluids, that's lack of fluids. We also have, like, you know, the famous pea soup scene is mm -hmm. taking, you know, food that provides sustenance, but twisting it, corrupting it in some way, expelling it. Uh, sexual fluids, I think, maybe not directly, but at least by proxy, would be things that are sort of corrupted or seen as negative, seen as, as no longer innocent. Um, right. So death with blood, of course, yeah, yeah, so... That makes sense. Then there's the twisting around of the head. Yeah, yeah. Uh, to me, I think of this idea that, that that different parts of me are now at odds, right? I don't see this part of me, or I'm turned away from this other part of me, and we're, we have different goals now. Mm -hmm. It's one of the ways you could see it, I think. Yeah, and um, that can also be seen like with like the famous like spider walking scene where she's bent completely over backwards. It's like literally mm -hmm. like one half of her body is facing exactly, one thing. exactly. Yeah. yeah. So that there is always this like at odds, uh, at odds um, with your own body, sort of. Um, and the spider walk could be seen as a way of moving when you're at odds with yourself. So that yeah. makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, and, and, that, and that, that's once once again like one of those things like coming back to. Uh, like real world um, like illnesses and stuff um, and like it, 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 it must be kind of it, I, I would hate to be in that position where you, you do have certain like emaciation of the body and, and stuff like that and then like see a horror movie in which those kind of things are, are presented where you see someone whose body looks like yours and they're mm -hmm. presented as Hey, look at this scary-looking person. Sure. That's like, uh, like I, I think a lot of the times um, uh, horror movies uh, go way too into ableism yeah. with the yeah. way that it's like, like the, the way this body is twisted and malformed is scary. Mm. Um, and, and so I, I definitely, but, but like, yeah, like. Which plays into this idea that that which is not normal, that which is other, is frightening. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. that makes sense.